The Watcher's Tale, Part 6, The Phoenix. Liz watched from beyond the tree. She could see Etheria smoking and Sabrina just sitting in the chair lost on her phone. Liz remembered happier scenes of laughter, talking, and fun. These past few months, however, the mood had changed and Liz was not happy about it. Liz had been on her own journey and had been on it for months. Her reason was her own. All everyone knew was that she was out to clear the way for everyone she loved. While she was on this journey, visiting the Nine Worlds, she heard a whisper that seemed to haunt her. Liz tried to ignore it, but the deeper she got into her journey, the louder the whisper got. Betrayal. Protect the chosen family. Pain. Sacrifice. Split the one. Help reunite. At first, Liz wasn't sure of the meaning. Betrayal? Who was being betrayed? Sacrifice? Split the one? It didn't make sense at first. And whatever being was trying to reach out to her realized this as well. Liz stopped outside the wooden doors of an abandoned temple when a vision touched her mind. Fire erupted all around Elohim and Etheria, their bodies burning, their screams filling the air. Liz watched in horror. Child of fire. Mother Moon said, A betrayal will soon take place. What has been set in motion cannot be undone. But if we are to save the Chosen Family, you must separate and stretch the flame for a time. You once helped bring the two together. You will do so again. Liz knew the voice of Luna Eth. What must I do? Liz asked. They must start at the beginning. I will lead my son. You must lead his soul flame and guide her and the oracle. Etheria will know what to do and what must be done, just as Elheim will. Liz responded, They will fight this. I know, my child, but to protect them, to protect their future, this must be done. Liz understood. When will this take place? Liz asked. Luna Eth responded. The, sh the shadow. The shadow has haunted them for thousands of years. It will move quickly and soon. Liz woke from her vision and felt the need to return to find Etheria. The feeling of dread started to fill her. Th then she saw it. The cabin on fire. In a flash of flame, her body transformed into a large phoenix. She flew high into the sky and in a blazing speed raced toward the cabin. She hoped it was not too late. Shaking her mind from those memories and still watching the porch, Liz felt anger boil inside her when she saw Etheria silently crying and Sabrina holding her tight. But also the child was sobbing. Her family, the one she vowed to herself to protect, was shattered and suffering from being torn apart. She knew that they would one day soon be together, again, permanently. But having to see them all being tested like this, to measure the resolve of each other, it was unbearable. And Liz had about enough. She wanted answers. Giving the two girls one last look, Liz vanished and appeared in a beautiful, grassy glade. Liz touched down. Her form from the phoenix turned to that of her usual form of a beautiful woman. Liz slowly walked through the warm grass, her bare feet feeling the energy of the ancient ground which radiated up her body. She was a woman of immense power, but why she felt dwarfed her own abilities. This was not her first time through the glades of the ancients, a place as old as time, where the ancients of the world met and ruled. Liz always enjoyed the scenery. Bright, vibrant flowers dotted the landscape. Their petals appeared as if they were glowing. In fact, when night fell, they did. Today was not a day to enjoy the eternal beauty of the glades, for as Liz continued towards the line of aspens that gave entrance to the ancient sanctum, her thoughts took root in dark corners of her mind. She needed answers, mainly why and for how long. Passing the white and gray barked trees, Liz followed the stone path which twisted and turned through the forest. She drew closer with, the, with every footfall and noticed a patch of white oak trees. She remembered there being three, but saw two and a stump of one. Then she recalled, 
Elohim had asked permission from the ancients to take one and turn it into a feasting table for his large family. Surprisingly, the ancients agreed. Knowing that Elohim would go to any length for his family was both comforting and also disconcerting to Liz. With everything going on, she wasn't sure which direction he would go. If things continued the way they were, Liz knew and feared what he might do. With that thought, she quenched her pace. With that thought, she quickened her pace until she came to an arched doorway of aspens. As she stepped under the arch, the branches shot in her direction, causing her to step back. The branches twisted and knotted together, forming a wall. Her anger burned. The ancients were denying her access to the earthly chambers. Not today, she whispered, lifting her arm and putting her hand towards the branches. The branches began to light in fire. Liz grabbed the branches and let the fire erupt. The enchanted wall began to shake and splinter apart in ash. After a few seconds, the blocked entrance lay on the ground in glowing embers. Liz darted through the archway and into the inner sanctums of the ancient. The outdoor chamber was surrounded by white oak and aspens. Stone slabs lined the ground in the crescent moon shape. In the front of the crescent rose a stone and earthen mound, dotted with stone hinges. Four thrones representing the ancients who called this glade home. Feeling the energy of the area, Liz could tell that at least three of the ancients were nearby. Show yourselves, she demanded. She was not in the mood to deal with the way the ancients behaved at times, especially since they just tried to block her from entering their place of rule, which didn't make sense to Liz. Unless, she said out loud. Taking a defensive stance, Liz probed the area. Taking a defensive stance, Liz probed the area with her mind. Three. Only three ancients she could sense, but something was off. Where is Ashnard? Ashnard, the Ancient of Wind. Ashnard, the Ancient of Wind, a tall and sickly thin creature, its skin covered in what looked like wisps of cloud, his eyes black as night. When he would speak, it was like listening to a hundred howling wolves at all, all at once. His energy was missing. A sense of dread filled Liz. She looked up and jumped, and as soon as her feet left the ground, she transformed into a phoenix. Soaring over the forest, Liz followed the energies of the three she could sense. Flying over the canopy of the autumn-colored for forest, Liz saw through an opening, and the ones she was looking for were there. They were looking down at something that Liz could not see. Answers were needed, so she descended quickly towards the ground. In a swirl of flame, Liz's feet touched the earth. She walked over to where the three large ancients were standing. She could now see what they were clearly staring at, the broken body of Ashnard. The wind ancient. The wind ancient laid lifeless, his arms and legs bent in unnatural positions. The sight made Liz cringe. How is this possible? She thought. Is he? She spoke to the three. One turned towards her. Ashnard is dead, daughter of fire, said a female creature. Her skin was brown and bark like. Vines covered her body, acting as clothing. Her hair, a mess of twigs, and every color leaf with antlers of a deer. She was the ancient of the forest. Caliestra, who did this? Liz asked. The shadow of old, said a deep voice. Liz looked at to her left, and there stood a man with a bull's head like a minotaur, the father of earth. Liz had heard the name before, the same evil that had been trying to destroy Elohim and Etheria. The same who now revealed himself to none other than Matthias. But how? she asked out loud. The other ancient, the guardian of water, who's always looked wet, which made sense to Liz, but there was always something a bit off about him or, or her Liz couldn't tell by their appearance. We do not know, but whomever did this unthinkable sin will pay greatly for defiling the glades and the murder of our brother. Liz was about to tell them that Matthias was the shadow, but thought against it. If the ancients found out that Matthias, a watcher, murdered one of their own, a war that has not been seen in eons would erupt. There was enough going on. No one needed a war. She decided to play along. The shadow has moved to you all now, 
It, as you are aware, is the very same who has recently put in motion the separation of the houses and Elohim and Etheria. Now it seems has set his eyes to shatter everything. The ancients did not seem phased by this, but Caliestra was the first to speak. We are aware of the divide. Our hearts sing with sadness for the rising sun. Liz was a bit taken back by Caliestra and what she said. That's all you have to say? You, the very ones who rejoice in the most when they were united, when you revealed to them their identities. You all set them in motion. You, who established their destiny, made prophecies concerning them. You act as if what has happened means nothing? Liz seethed with anger. Sure, the ancients could act disconnected and detached, but Liz had learned early on how invested they all were in Elohim and Etheria. It was the bull-like ancient that answered next. The soul flames must endure the separate trials. But do not take Haliestra's words as ice. We have lost our brother, daughter of flame. Nature is no longer in balance. His words cut Liz to the core. Ashnard was dead, murdered by Matthias. Yet Liz came here for answers. Like her father, her anger was hard to control. But if she wanted answers, she would have to press harder. I am sorry for your brother's death, and it will be avenged. But I need to know how much longer. How much more must the two endure, she asked. Saldra, the water ancient, answered. Child, every great king and queen must be refined and shaped. Our choice to reignite the flames was in perfect time. We brought them together to become one again in perfect time. Though it was not our sight to foresee the evils moving, they must use this time to be refined, for we will bring reunion soon. They must be ready. Now depart and let us grieve our brother's death. Liz did not argue. How could she? Saldras was right. The ancients are experiencing something that only mortals experience. Death. Looking at the three with different eyes, she could see the sorrow in their expressions. Liz respectfully bowed and turned to walk away. While she walked, she thought about Saldra's words of Elohim and Etheria and of the others in the houses. He was right, and his words also matched a feeling in her soul. Stopping in a clearing, Liz looked up into the brilliant blue sky. How much more sorrow can they all endure? She asked out loud. Jumping into the air, the phoenix took shape and soared into the sky. Liz could feel the balance of nature already twisted. The wind around her was unstable, but she could manage. She headed back to Etheria and Sabrina. Liz had much to plan and ponder. Flash! The lightning struck Liz out of nowhere, and immediately she lost consciousness. She fell from the sky and landed hard onto the ground. Liz lay there in her human form now, motionless. From a distance, Matthias watched as the phoenix fell to the earth. A smile creased his face. Oh no, little birdie. <laughs> they are mine. The end.